Coming up on CPTV, new signs around the school reignite student discussion of the CPHS dress code. CP sophomore Elizabeth Gonzalez is announced as winner of the Power of Children's Award, and we'll get a preseason look at the boys' basketball team as they prepare for their season opener. CPTV is up next. I'm Molly Lockhart. And I'm Ben Land. Welcome to CPTV. Kirsten Robinson will have your five-day weather forecast, and Andrew Mild will bring us CP Sports highlights. Here's what's happening at Crown Point High School. The CPHS administration has updated the dress code somewhat for the 2017-2018 school year. New signs reminding students of the code appeared throughout the school a few weeks ago, causing students to reconsider the policy once again. Here's CPTV Savannah Everson with more. Dress code, a procedure that all students are expected to follow, but how many students are actually aware of the school dress code, or better yet, choose to follow it? The current standards for the dress code, I, I think the basic fo focus is professionalism. Um, you know, one of the big talking points this year that staff has shown to be concerned about are hats and uh, head coverings that weren't approved by administration. So, you know, we feel like that's been getting better. Um, you know, certainly we don't want to see undergarments showing, and there's you know, those have always been a concern, so. You know, I don't think anybody here's out there to play a gotcha. Um, you know, typically it's just gonna be a warning or a reprimand, you know, just a request to, to help the student or remind them of what the dress code is if they're not following it. And, you know, a request possibly to to make sure they're following the proper protocols. I do think majority of students follow dress code. I haven't seen with my eyes anybody else who doesn't. I think it's good for many reasons because um, you're not kids can't wear whatever they want to school. They're following school appropriate rules, which I think is good for how the school looks. I'm a guy, so there's not really specific dress code that I have to follow. This year, I've seen a lot of um, students walking around showing their body parts, and I don't think anybody really wants to see that. So the rules have gotten stricter, which is good because it's kind of what we need nowadays. I feel like the dress code is reasonable for multiple reasons. I just feel like they want you to look presentable for like, because they're getting ready, getting you ready for college. And I feel like that having a dress code just implies that more to have you to like look forward and like look presentable for people that you're going to be maybe hired for. So I do believe the dress code is reasonable. Well, I think dress codes are like. Like, like pretty good for the school because it um, helps it create like more of like a business business environment but um, I think some of it's like a little bit unnecessary like the part where you can't show shoulders I think that's a little like unnecessary because it's just a shoulder but I think um, covering up like underwear makes sense regardless of students opinions of the school dress code all are expected to follow the policy out of respect for students staff administration and themselves for CPTV I'm Savannah Everson. Back-to-back -back mass shootings this fall have once again sparked the discussion of gun control in America. Questions regarding our Second Amendment right over a need to reform and what kinds of guns people should own have fueled the debate. Here's CPTV's Ashley Reed with more. School shooting at an elementary school. There are reports of a shooting at a nightclub. At least 59 people killed. Now the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. Throughout history, gun control has been a spiraling topic, from the most recent mass shooting claiming 26 lives. According to CNN, 52% of Americans are against gun control, leaving the other 48% either undecided or in support. Some people believe that only our five branches of military and our police force should be armed, but others believe that civilians should also be armed. This is what the CPHS students had to say about this topic. I am for gun control because I think gun control laws should be way stricter because I feel if they're too loose right now and if they get stricter then we wouldn't have all these mass shootings. I am against gun control because I believe that there is a certain situation where people can defend themselves. I think it's very helpful but uh, to a certain extent I don't think that people should mess around with them or 
I, I just think it should be taken seriously, but I think people ha should have the right to have a gun with them. I believe that we need gun control because a lot of accidents happen in the United States, and not just accidents, we have a lot of mass shootings that we need to address, and we keep saying that we're going to do something about it, and we keep giving prayers and condolences, but then we don't do anything about it. And when people like to argue about the right to bear arms and back when the founding fathers put that in the constitution one of their guns could only shoot three bullets per minute and now they can shoot over 90 if it's a semi-automatic weapon we don't need one of those to protect ourselves i think guns need to be restricted more i am against gun control um i don't believe it's really the guns that kill the people i believe it's the people's decisions that uh cause them to kill people um in in, in the worst case scenario um Guns don't only do violence, you know, you look at some of the biggest terrorist attacks we've had, uh, like the Boston bombing, for example, they used pressure cookers and uh, sharp shrapnel, and that took out a lot of people as well. So I don't think it's, a me it's the guns, I think it's just the people behind them. BTV, I'm Ashley Reed. Crown Point sophomore Elizabeth Gonzalez was recently announced the winner of the Power of Children Award by the Indianapolis Children's Museum. The award recognizes children's grades 6 through 11 all over the nation who have selflessly impacted communities with extraordinary service projects to benefit society. Power Over Children's Award is an award that the Indianapolis Children's Museum sponsors, and it's a very prestigious award. Uh, Crown Point High School nominated Elizabeth Gonzalez because of her strong leadership and advocacy skills. When I was in fourth grade, I wrote a book called The Unexpected Flower, and when my parents found it, they realized that there was a moral to the story and that was that you can find a purpose within anything and I realized that not everyone sees that within themselves and that's when I realized that I had to make a difference. The process to create the signs is quite difficult so it starts started out with me having to go to the city council and get even the idea of having signs under street signs approved. Then I started with a graphic designer designing my signs. After I got the final product of my sign, I contacted the schools and they were more than elated to have my signs up. We picked some unique food combinations and asked students to give them a try, blindfolded. In a new segment called Wine and Dine, their reactions were just as expected. Take a look. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Oh, that's kind of good. I can't. That's really good. No, I can't. I don't have trust issues. How is it? It's beans. Oh, up there. What else, though? I don't know. <laughs> It tastes like icing that and peanut like butter. Texture, like a blanket that you sleep with, <laughs> like if you're like drooling on it or something. Like they're really slimy, so it's like it's sauce. What do you mean it's sauce? <laughs> sauce. There's a lot of sauces. <laughs> oh, I know it. <laughs> well, I'm okay with this combination. I'm not. <laughs> Come on. This is, oh. Mm. It's so gross. Uh, yeah. Ew. I hate pickles. I like peanut butter. <laughs> I have a jar of this next to my bed every night, and then I'll just bring up a jar of each. Oh. <laughs> it's so it has chunky. It's so chunky. Chunky substance. It's so chunky. <laughs> Oreo. It tastes pretty, pretty good. good it doesn't taste bad. Yeah, good minty flavors. Ah. <laughs> oh, this man. What else is it? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's a man. I'm going mad. That's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Who would put a banana with mayonnaise? That is not a pleasant thing.
Cold temps and rain moved in over the weekend, but things are looking up for the four-day holiday break. And here with your CP five-day weather forecast is CPTV's Kirsten Robinson. The weather this week has continued to stay around the 40s with a little bit of rain. But let's have a look at the five-day forecast and see what's in store over the break. For the rest of today, we can expect to see nice sunny skies with the high at about 48 degrees, a temperature that we can expect for this time of the year. We'll drop to a chilly 25 for tonight's low. On Wednesday, a little bit of cloud cover moves in and we'll have dropped to a high of 37. For Thanksgiving Day, temperatures will rise into the lower 40s with some cloud coverage. Still a very nice day for the holiday. And then a mix of sun and clouds for Friday and Saturday, with temperatures hovering around the low to mid 40s. It looks like a nice dry break is in store. We can expect more of the same weather as we head back to school on Monday with more sun and clouds, but temperatures look like they will drop next week into the mid-30s. Have a great break, everyone. Fall sports have come and gone, and the opening of both the boys' and girls' basketball season ushers in the start of winter sports. Here with CP Sports highlights is CPTV's Andrew Miles. The girls' basketball team hosted the Crown Point Classic on Saturday, with Maryville, Northridge, and number one team in the state, Carmel, all in attendance. CP took on Northridge in their first of two games. The game was back and forth as the Raiders were holding on to a slim 37-36 lead after three quarters. But in the fourth quarter, the Dogs could not keep up as the Raiders pulled ahead, winning 51-42. Senior Maya Scheidt led the Dogs with 15 points while shooting 45% from the field. In the nightcap, the Dogs faced a tough Carmel squad who started the game on a 29-0 run and never looked back as the Greyhounds took the win 74-21. Sophomore Abby Stoddard led the Dogs with 8 points while shooting 60% from the field. The Dogs' next game is 7 p.m. tonight versus EC Central at home. Media Day has come and gone, and the boys' basketball team is prepping for their season and home opener at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. I was there for Media Day, and here is a preseason look and who your 2017-2018 Dogs are. After a disappointing end to last year's season, the Bulldogs look to make up for the loss of their four senior starters. With Savanovich, Decker, Tomich, and Keneally gone, the Dogs turn to a young but promising lineup filled with depth. From shooters to tenacious rebounders, here's what to expect from the 2017-2018 boys basketball season. This year, I feel like I can get into that bench. I feel like that uh, we don't have to worry about running out of gas trying to win two games in a weekend or win three games in a week. I feel like this year, uh, that won't be as, as much of an issue. Uh, I feel confident despite losing uh, four of our starters, but we're gonna. I think we might have uh, some bumps in the road to start, start the season, you know, figure ourselves out, whole new roster. But I think once March comes, I think we'll start clicking. I'm going to approach the game how it comes to me. I'm not going to force as much this year. Uh, I worked on my three-point shooting, and I worked on my... Uh, like talking, trying to be a leader out there. My goal is the same one as we always had every year, win sectionals and then keep moving forward. I feel like we can do a lot of things this year, make some noise. The boys basketball season tips off Wednesday, November 22nd against Pullman Academy at home. Opening tip off is at 8 p.m. For CPTV Media, I'm Andrew Mild. The Crown Point Youth Soccer Club sponsored a special needs soccer event at the Sparta Dome Sunday night. CPTV's Josh Port was at the event. This Sunday, students and kids of all ages volunteered at the Sparta Dome to host a special needs soccer event where the kids get taught how to play and compete in soccer games. I thought it was a great idea to come out here and play soccer with the kids and teach them how to play, help the community. I'm helping a kid named Matthew today and I'm teaching him how to kick, pass, dribble, do all these things, seeing all these wonderful kids come and help and everyone's having a great time and it's a lot of fun. This is a good event because it allows um, children with special needs to just come out and interact with everyone. Today I worked with Xavier and we passed, and we took a few shots on goal, and we worked on juggling. For sure, I'd definitely do it again. I had a lot of fun today. It was a great time for everyone. They all seemed happy to bond over this sport, and most volunteers claim they are excited for it to possibly happen again next year. For CPTV, I'm Josh Port. The theater department closed their fall production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory over the weekend. They've done a great job. I mean, there's a lot of challenges to a show like this. It's a shorter show than most, but there are a lot of challenges because every child, if you're familiar with the story, every child runs into some trouble, and the trouble involves some, some special effects. And so it's been a, 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 big, a big job, but I think the staff has done a great job. Uh, I think the play did very well. Uh, 
I was grateful for my role and everybody in the cast and crew was grateful for their role. It all went together very nicely and we almost sold out uh, each day. It was uh, good. Yeah, finishing the first show was, uh, was a real uh, great moment for me. We saw everybody out there and it was really fantastic considering that uh, the football game was going on and, you know, I wasn't expecting a big crowd. But there was a lot of people and the applause felt really good. Everybody did a real swell job and, you know. I'm Grandma Georgina and I'm an Oompa Loompa. The grandparents are only in the first 20 minutes of the play, so the rest of the time during the play I'm an Oompa Loompa. And the costumes and the makeup are just so fun. When I'm a grandma, I get to have crazy age makeup and a big wig and fun nightgowns. It's so fun. And then for when I'm an Oompa Loompa, I have bright orange makeup with purple contour and this hilarious costume. It's just so much fun to do both. With Thanksgiving just days away, it's always interesting to hear just what exactly students have planned for their four-day weekend. Here's CPTV's Armando Bracco with more. With Thanksgiving coming up and it being a time to celebrate and give thanks, but people also celebrate many traditions on this day. But what exactly are those traditions? Spending time with family over Thanksgiving, that's a crucial part to me. My mom always makes this uh, pecan pie uh, that's uh, it's really special. She makes it every year, and uh, it's, it's all about family time. Just thankful for the people that brought you up. A lot of our family comes from um, comes over to my house, my dad's house, and uh, just have a full-on feast like, like other families. But we also like, we like to play some board games and everything and have a good old time. My family just kind of comes over, and we all just hang out and make cookies and eat food and just spend time with a lot of people that we don't get to see outside of just the holidays and things like that. What I normally do for um, family traditions is that we usually have a secret recipe for the stuffing for the turkey. So normally I just go to the kitchen and make it with my mom. Traditions are something that all families have over the holidays and it's what even makes it more special for some. For CPTV, I'm Armando Bracco. And since Thanksgiving is Thursday, that most likely means many of us have started to think about Christmas. What's your plans for this holiday season? For Christmas, my plans are to hang out at my grandma's and then I hope to get like maybe more clothes and stuff like that. For Christmas, I just want to chill at home and, you know, watch Netflix and spend time with family and eat food. My plans for Christmas is to just spend time with family and like have a good time and eat Christmas dinner. That'll do for today's show. If you're in a club, team, or participating in some type of extracurricular activity and would like us to promote your event, DM us on Twitter at CPTV Media. Remember, you can view all of our past episodes on cptvmedia.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at cptvmedia. For Kirsten Robinson, Andrew Mild, and all of us here at CPTV, I'm Ellie Lockhart. And I'm Ben Lamb. We'll see you next time. Take care.